Converting this kind of nest is actually going to be very, maybe a little bit difficult. Maybe. I'll have to see. I should have all the parts here that I need. My clippers, my glue, my kenanas, my pile of bits to maybe put on her, as well as some more bits that I need to put onto my tanks, including another repressor dozer ram, which for some reason I have extras of these. And I don't know why I do, but I do. I'm also going to need some green stuff, so I'm going to have to go and grab that real quick. This is actually a few things that I forgot. One, I forgot my green stuff, which I have it like this. Had this for a very, very, very long time. It served me well. I have my X-Acto knives. And again, as I said, some old bits, which I have to rip off like 60 storm bolters from stuff just so that I can... Uh, well, go ahead and rebuild uh, my sister superiors, who now can't have storm bolters for some reason. I'm unsure why the reason that is, but that's what they did, and that is GW. So, let me move this box over here, and we can get started on this. So one of the first things that I want to do is I'm going to re remove this ridiculous headpiece and the nipple tassels. I am not a fan of the nipple tassels at all, in any way, shape, or form. I think they look really, 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 really silly. The Rod of Office actually isn't that bad of an ability, because um, it, it adds a good range to your, uh, to your auras. It also doesn't replace any of the weapons, so it's just an additional item to carry. I'm not too keen on carrying it because I, I really don't like the Rod of Office. Um, just because I, I don't like it as a person. The war gear option is actually really good. It's just I don't like how this is set up on here. So one of the, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to search the Sororitas box for an exposed head really quickly because I actually want my sisters to look semi-decent. So... On the box set itself, well, in the box set itself, they do give you a ton of different options for heads, which I really like, and I really appreciate that GW did that. And they went out of their way to make sure that they gave you plenty of options. Like, I think I already saw 10 different heads. So what I'm thinking... Do, 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 do. Let's go with this one over here. With some exposed hair. We'll just grab that one. That's going to be the head of my Canoness. And what I'm going to do for the head of the Canoness, I should have put it in here, is I'm going to take a plume from an Adeptus Custodian and I'm going to attach it to the back so it looks like a ponytail. That is one of the first things that I want to do on this Canoness. So the Canoness model should be fairly simple. Um, I can tell you this, right off the bat, Sister of Silence arms are going to fit right onto here. So if you want to outfit your Canon S with something different, Sister of Silence arms will fit. So we're going to go ahead and cut her out first. Doop. Now this is pretty much a snap fit model, so make sure you keep your bits away from it. Except for the ones we're going to use. And let's go ahead and pop that off, pop that off. She has a grenade right on her side, which is good because grenades, grenades are actually amazing. I do like the sword being cocked down. I, I think that's a really cool aesthetic. Typically what I do is I put the swords on their backs and I go from there. Now to make her look a little bit more fancy, I have the Amalia's flames and everything, which we're going to be putting on here. More than likely, just on the base itself, we have her cape, which every cool character should have capes. Sorry, capes are cool. I like I like capes. Okay, and I don't really care about these parts down here, so we'll just go ahead and snip them as close as I can. Get those off. Okay, and even the rod of office will take off. That rod of office could also be used as a power mace and no one would really notice the difference. 
We also have her bionic leg, which I think is one of her coolest aesthetics. And then everything else on here is pretty much garbage. Uh, I have the nun head on here. I'm not a big fan of the nun head. I just don't really like it. And I'm going to take a look at the other sprues for sisters that I have to see if there's a bit of a better backpack to put on her. And I think I found one from the Mistress of Repentance. And I think that's the one I want to go with for her. So my Mistress of Repentance will probably be slightly edited and won't have this backpack, but I think that's fine. Also, if you don't build the um, Penitent Engine in here, the pilot can be used as a demon host. So we're just going to put a regular backpack on the regular sister. On the, um, on the Mistress of Repentance over here. Just so we can get a cooler a cooler backpack for her. So, now we have all of our pieces. There's a few things that I want to do before putting anything together, and that's I want to look for the cape, and I want to cut off the plasma pistol. So, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my clippers, and I'm going to go right to it really quickly, and I'm going to try to snip this so it doesn't hit the edge of the cape. There we go because I don't like her with a plasma pistol. Okay. So we'll just clip all of that nonsense off. I did forget a slight file, which is fine. So then what I want to do is I want to dig through my bits I believe I put one here somewhere, or I didn't, and I am dumb and forgot to put it over here. So I went ahead and dug through my bits, and unfortunately, I could not, for the life of me, find an Inferno pistol. It kind of sucks that they're only ever in like one kit, so you really have to search for them. They're only in, um, Blood Angel's Death Company kits. So we're going to go ahead and just keep cutting this off and making sure we don't damage that edge. Should be fine right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gun right here and I'm essentially going to remove the front end of it and put it so that it is back there. I just have to make sure that this will still stick to the character. Oh yeah, it will. So, we're just going to go ahead and cut off the front end of this gun. So this is the combi melta bit, but if you ever get the combi melta, the actual melta part of the bit, it's really quick for making um, inferno pistols. You just cut this part off right here, which we will go ahead and do. And then you go directly to the end part of the bit itself and just cut off the melt apart. And now that you did that, you essentially just straighten this out. Let's go ahead and just make sure we get that straight, straight enough. And then you take a little tiny bit of super glue. Okay, I'm just gonna set that down for a second. So I can take this piece right here, make sure we get that full notch off. That way it's nice and flat. Connect these two pieces and you hold it for a second. It's going to take a minute. And essentially, you make yourself an Inferno pistol. That's it. That's the quickest conversion for an Inferno Pistol you can do. Everybody should have a couple of these bits. They're not too hard to find. So we're going to go ahead and attach this to her back once this dries. So I'm just going to let that sit off to the side. And I'm going to work on these little tassels 
So right off the bat, I just want to figure out where to cut this so that I can reuse the bit. Thinking right here is good. Cut it right above the notch, right in between this notch right here. So if you guys are confused, it is right here right there that we are cutting. Okay, and let me just get... That way these bits can still be used on the side just hanging from her. And by these bits, I mean these right here. Because they still make good ornaments on like Sororitas vehicles, Sisters of Battle themselves, or maybe even our canoness, but just not on her nipples. So that is not where we want them. So then I'm just going to go ahead and carve all the way up to the top because I'm going to try to get this in a nice triangle on both sides. Just to try to get this thing out of there. Unfortunately, it does look like I'm going to have to cut this off, which is fine. So I can't save the top half, but that's okay. Cut that off. Then I'm just going to carve right into it. Okay, so it should look like that. You can see that my nails aren't done right now, and I had to remove my last nails. Sorry about that. Just going to go ahead and tear that off. So now we have a front that looks like this, which is a hundred times better, to be honest. Okay, so now with the nipple tassels gone, she's essentially ready to be assembled for the most part. I still want to get the rest of this gun off back here. So I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to go ahead and just try to remove this piece like in its entirety. So I'm just going to put my clippers right up to it and I'm just going to cut this piece right out. So. Now I just need to sand this off. So, went ahead and got my nail file because I do my nails a lot. I'm just going to go ahead and sand that down just a bit. Just try to smooth it out, make a better gluing surface as well. Okay, so the pistol is gone, which is kind of what I really wanted. So now we just need to get a trigger for this pistol and it'll be done and ready to go. So did I actually, th did I forget a pistol grip? Yes, I did. I am the smirt. S-M-R-T. Well, regardless, it should be hidden enough that we don't need one necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and check with some bits. Do I need to check with some bits? I think this is hidden well enough. And finding pistol grips is actually really difficult. So we might just have to make one. If anything, I'm not 100% worried. So let's go ahead and... There's a piece. There we go. So this has to glue to here as an inferno pistol. Or we could put this in the hand, which is another option. Ooh, we have options. Let me see what this looks like really quickly, just once again, see how much room I'm working with. Okay, so if I held this here for just a second, I could actually hang the gun sideways, like so, and it would work. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and glue this piece together now. That is way too much super glue. That was my bad. Please don't get on my hand. 
Okay, there we go. And what I'm going to do now is now I want to remove this bit around that, that stupid collar. The collar looks idiotic, to be honest. So we're going to let this dry. We're going to let this dry. We have what we need for the Sororitas backpack, which honestly, with the flames, it actually looks a little bit better. It doesn't look like a chode. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on to a different part of the armor and see what else we need to do to this. So one thing we need to check is how this girl sits on here. So she actually sits on there fairly well, which is good. So we just need to attach the bionic leg. It's fine. So we're actually going to go ahead and attach this piece because this isn't going to interfere with anything. So we'll go ahead and attach that. So we almost have the cannoness actually built. And I'll attach her bionic leg. Because again, that won't cause any problems. There we go. Hold it there for like two seconds. Now, the boring part of waiting for super glue to set, which is always fun. There we go. So we have her, for the most part, built. Now what's cool about this is the connection pieces are actually at the uh, shoulders themselves, so you can switch up her weapons with whatever you want from this point out. So it's really, really, really good. And all you have to do is then put this around it and you can actually have any and all of the weapon options you want for your Canon S. But we are gonna go with Inferno Pistol because you know me and Inferno Pistols, they may not be the best weapon, but I love them. We're gonna go with Inferno Pistol on her. We're gonna go with the sword. Let me just check something really quickly. Boop. So she has a plethora of war gear options. So we're just going to take a look at her really fast. Yeah, she's the first option in the book. This model may, may be equipped with one bolt gun and one power sword instead of one bolt pistol and one chain sword. If this model is equipped with one bolt gun and one power sword, it additionally can get a rod of office, which means that is the only combo to get the rod of office. Which also makes that this model illegal because she has a plasma pistol. So uh, yeah, that's fun. This model can be this model can be equipped with one of the following instead of the bolt pistol. So I assume you can still keep the bolt pistol instead of one bolt pistol. Model is equipped with huh one condemner bolt gun and one item from the pistol list. Okay. This model can be equipped with one of the following instead of a chain sword, a power sword, a blessed blade. If this model is equipped with one chain sword, it can have the Bajir Holy Fire or a null rod. So, is that a null rod instead of the rod of office? Because otherwise, she can't have it because plasma pistol. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do blessed blade which we're probably just going to use the sword for because the sword is easy. Or I could actually use the Sister of Silence Great Blade and make her look really unique. Ooh, we might do that. Then what would her other hand carry if she has... Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. So she can only have a few weapon kits. Chain sword. It can have the Brigier of Holy Fire. Or a no rod. This model may be equipped with one of the following instead of a chain sword, the power sword of the blessed blade. And the blessed blade is uh, strength 5, AP minus 3, D3 damage, which actually makes it a pretty decent weapon in close combat. So we really have to determine what the best combo of weapons is. And I think it can take a relic blade as well. Power sword, blessed blade, and what else? What else? What else? What else? Holy fire. Hmm. Nope, just looks like Power Sword and Blessed Blade. That is, uh, interesting. So we're in an interesting conundrum. We're going to take the Infernal Pistol and the Blessed Blade, but that also means that we can't take this route of office. So, I 
don't know what to do with this. This this Canon S model is built illegally, and I think that's actually rather unique. I'm wondering if his, this one was supposed to be a named character of some sort. Hmm. Now that begs the question, because I wanted to put the Inferno pistol on her side, like so, and have her hand... Ooh, I got an idea. Got an idea. So, looking at her, I decided to go through my bits and grab an empty hand from my Sisters of Silence. This way I actually have an open female arm that can reach out because otherwise this build is, you know, not possible. So I'm going to keep the sword as the blessed blade. I'm going to keep the Inferno pistol on her side. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to have to trim up the arm a little bit and I'm going to keep this piece right here. So with that all said, we can now actually start editing some of this back plate. So one of the first things I'm going to do is just snip this thing literally right off. I don't care. It looks terrible. Okay, so I snipped it off so you can see it like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand it down. Round it out just a bit. Okay, and we're going to try to make it look like it was never really there, which isn't too difficult. It just looks like the end of the cape, which is good. So then I'm going to take my Sister of Silence hand and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the Sister's shoulder pad. And what this does, it allows us to put the arm on. So let's just go ahead and get that crap out of the way. Okay. Go ahead and sand this piece down. There we go. So we could cut down the shoulder just a little bit more, which we're definitely going to need to. So, go like this and go clip, clip, and go around this piece right here. So now we just need to round this piece out. Just go ahead and get this done. There we go. So now this arm can actually fit on here fairly well. So we'll go ahead and attach this arm, now that it does fit. And I'm going to turn it just slightly, because one thing that we had to do is make sure that it fits that exact, that exact piece, so the other piece can go right over it. So we just need to let that sit for a second. Now I just need to see if this piece goes over it. It does look like we're going to have to pop off the collar on here because the collar on the front piece actually does connect to the back piece so we do need to cut all this off. So let's just go ahead and start cutting into that. Okay. There we go. So now that is shaved down. And while we wait on the other piece, we'll go ahead and attach the backpack. Now if you are painting this first, make sure you don't attach all these pieces. I'm going to paint it afterwards, so I'm not too, too worried. Just go ahead and hold that together for a second. And then that's looking way better than the current model. So then, we just need to go ahead and check this sword really quickly. 
see how much room it gives us. We do have to curve the sword just a little bit to make sure that our Inferno pistol does set there perfectly. So that's what we're going to do. Good, have a little bit of glue and we'll put it in like that instead so we have room for our Inferno pistol. So we'll hold it. Should have set. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab a little tiny bit of glue there, a little tiny bit of glue here. And we're going to go ahead and attach this front piece. Now I did have a feeling that this wouldn't set perfectly. But if it sets close enough, that'd be great. Like I said, I just need to get it to fit first. Hey, hey, sit there, you butt. All right, we'll just do one side at a time, I guess. So we'll just hold this thing and pinch it together. So we do have a gap over here. That's going to be a problem, and it fell, fell off. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about that piece just yet, because that's going to annoy the crap out of me. And we do have the head to work with. So we did take one of the young seraphim heads and we are definitely putting that on. I always like to angle my heads so that they're not looking straight because I don't like models looking in the directions that their features aren't pointing because that's not human. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's stoic. And I'm just like, wow, that's incredibly stupid. So, there we go. Now we got a younger Kenaness. Younger looking Kenaness. So let's go ahead and try to attach this thing again. Okay, sorry, I am pulling my hands off camera. I do apologize about that. Oh crap, I just dropped a piece. So we, whoop. As I drop it. So we finally went ahead and attached these pieces up here. Now when you paint it, it will look much better than this. As you can see, all the scrapes and scratches on it. But you can cover that up with a little bit of green stuff. I was also going to put the plume on her hair. And then I realized that, that there's fire on the back. So uh, yeah, she would just be engulfed in flames. And um, let's not do that. So right now we're pretty much done with this Kenaness. We're going to go ahead and attach the Inferno Pistol on her side now, which I went ahead and forgot my super glue, which is perfect. So what we're going to do is just put a little dab of glue right over here. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit right on the side right over there. And then we're going to go ahead and slide the gun into place. so that she has her Inferno Pistol on her side. I did want that a little bit lower, and it does look a little bit big, but to be honest, that's fine, because she is properly armed now as a proper Canon S, because out of the box, this Canon S is not usable. Um, so that's interesting. Now, we do have some stuff for her side just to make her look more imperial and whatever. And I do have a bunch of doodads that I might hang from her. Put some stuff on a chest, maybe. We have some purity seals that you can hang from her, which I might do, depending. Actually, right there looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hang that right there. Okay. So put a few purity seals on her. Everybody needs purity seals. So there we go. So right now this Canon S is finished. Like, she's done. So we're gonna go ahead and just tab a little bit of glue 
put her on her base. We're using a 32 mil base, which we've already painted, but will be repainted. That is simple corkboard, and that's it, but it always looks really, really good on terrain, as terrain. And, and with that, our canoness is finished. So, this is a pretty simple build, a very simple way of taking that horrid canoness and actually making her look really, really, really good in my opinion. I do like the bergeres on the back. Um, this is actually how I wear it in Dark Heresy. Uh, I don't actually use them as just um, the, flame, the flames on the back. I use it as a torch, essentially. But with that, we did finish this. I do want to get a cherubim for her base as well. I might include something else, I'm not sure. But so far, I am really, really, really digging this model now. I think that this came out fantastic. I want to know your thoughts on this model. Please tell me in the comment section down below. While you're there, please be sure to visit all the links in the description. There you can follow me on all sorts of social media. You can check me out on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and a few others. As well as checking out my Teespring. And if you're super awesome, you can check out my Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to help supporting the channel. It really, really helps me get miniatures like this and really helps push forward for the future of the channel. As always, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye. Hey everyone, do you want a cool shirt? Be sure to check out my Teespring. Link is in the description down below.